Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be reviewing the Browning Automatic Rifle. And I'll be talking a little bit later in the video about my updated impressions of Wake Island and some things that I think could make it significantly better. Now, in the midst of the 5.2 update and the soon to be hot fix next week, it can be a little tricky reviewing a new weapon because, well, this weapon specifically is going to change with the hotfix next week. The change isn't going to be massive, so a lot of the style of how it's designed in-game currently is going to persist. It's just going to get balanced out a little bit better. I can talk about how it plays now and how it's going to play next week. And by the way, the patch is not confirmed releasing next week. It's just what DICE is hoping they can do. Now the bar, the Browning Automatic Rifle, the M1918, uh, was actually one of my favorite guns in Battlefield 1. The very first iteration of the bar was the basic M1918. The one that was further developed, modified, and upgraded for World War II was the M1918A2. This one came with a select fire mode. And in game, it's gonna allow the weapon to switch between rapid fire and normal slow automatic fire. So in rapid fire, it can shoot 720 rounds per minute. And in slow fire mode, it can shoot 490 rounds per minute. And you might be wondering, well, uh, why would you pick the slow rate of fire mode? Well, DICE has actually added in some pretty interesting characteristics with this weapon that sort of set it apart from anything else on the battlefield. The damage model for this weapon changes depending on what fire mode you have selected for the weapon. In the fast rate of fire mode, this weapon has a six shot kill that extends all the way out to 30 meters and then progressively drops off from there uh, all the way out to about a nine shot kill. So really in high rate of fire, you're not gonna wanna use it too much beyond 30 meters. Within 30 meters though, it does kill relatively quickly. I don't know if I would say it feels like a bar since this weapon shoots such big rounds uh, and you're using it more like an SMG in many regards, but it's accurate and if you got the aim to back it up, you can down one person very quickly. Getting two kills with a single mag is going to be highly, highly unlikely with this weapon, highly uncommon unless both of your targets are hurt or standing right next to each other. Now, in the low rate of fire mode, the 490 round per minute rate of fire, the weapon has a six shot kill in close quarters and a six shot kill at extreme range. What does this mean? Well, it performs basically identical to the Madsen MG. Now the Madsen, in my opinion, is one of the better uh, LMGs in the game right now because it's incredibly accurate and has a large magazine and can just drop tons and tons of people at range. I've been using it quite a bit since the 5.2 patch dropped. So making the bar kind of like a gimped version of the Madsen in the low rate of fire mode isn't necessarily a bad thing. If the bar only had a low rate of fire mode, then you would just basically pick the Madsen over the bar every time. But because the bar gives you the option to switch between close range and long range, it's kind of interesting and it does make sense why it shouldn't be as good as the Madsen in its low rate of fire mode. It shoots a little bit slower than the Madsen and it's got a smaller magazine. So you're just not gonna be able to do quite as much at long range, but it does give you that option. If you're switching between cover or combat situations, you can now switch between close quarter and long range. And I was switching it up quite a bit during combat just to test it out. Now, the low rate of fire mode for this weapon after the hotfix drops next week is not gonna change at all. So if you try out the low rate of fire mode and you like it or you don't like it or whatever, it's not changing in the hotfix next week. It's not to say it won't ever change, but that's just the plans for next week. Um, it's not bad in the low rate of fire mode at extreme range, but the limited ammo doesn't really let you get any follow-up targets or anything like that. I preferred using it in the high rate of fire mode and only used the low rate of fire mode when I felt I absolutely had to or there was no close range threats. Now, its high rate of fire mode is getting tweaked for the TTK hotfix. Instead of having a six shot kill in extreme close quarters, it's going to have a four shot kill at zero to 10 meters and a five shot kill at 10 to 15 meters. And then once it hits 15 to basically 30 meters, it's gonna be in that six shot kill range. So beyond 15 meters, the weapon is going to perform exactly as it does now, but in an extreme close range, you're gonna have a much faster TTK. And that's what DICE is doing across the board for almost all the guns. In extreme close quarters, you're not gonna to have to hit people five, six times with most of the weapons. It'll be a four shot kill again. And this is going to basically, in a sense, it's reverting a lot of the TTK design of the game 
just not at extreme ranges. So uh, I like the bar in its sort of CQB aggressive format. I think it's going to be a good weapon for the support class. I think it's going to add a bit of variety in terms of mixing up its abilities on the battlefield. And once we get that TTK update, I think we will see a lot more people using the bar. The one thing that you're just gonna have to accept about this weapon combat wise is that it's pretty much intended for a one kill reload style weapon. You don't have to expend the whole magazine necessarily on that one kill, so hopefully you can get a slightly faster reload. But for the most part, you're not gonna be expecting to get two kills per mag. Um, and that's something that if you're not comfortable with that gameplay style, it might aggravate you about this weapon. I'm pretty darn used to it. Most of the weapons in Battlefield 1 were like that, and so that's just what I'm used to, and I know how to play that if you can. You need more cover for that kind of gameplay style because you have to shoot, duck behind cover, reload, and hope that somebody doesn't charge your position or get ready to switch to a sidearm or rely on a teammate to back you up while you're reloading. Now, some of you might be wondering, how exactly does this weapon, as far as its close quarter combat capabilities, differentiate itself from, say, an SMG? Well, an SMG's damage drop off is going to start much sooner. So its medium ranged effectiveness is not gonna be as good as the bar but the bar is limited by its 20 round magazine. Plus it's not gonna have as good of hip fire as an SMG, even if you pick the hip fire tree. So it's close quarter capabilities are going to be limited from an ammo capacity angle and also a hip fire angle compared to SMGs. So really this weapon is intended primarily as a medium range gun, but it can certainly make itself functional at close quarters. And with the slow rate of fire mode, it can be functional at longer range. I love the versatility design of this weapon and I can't wait to test it out further with the new TTK hotfix. Now, I wanted to quickly address Wake Island again. Yesterday, I put out a video where I talk about some of the TTK stuff, but also gave a quick review of Wake Island. Now that I've had time to play it a bit more, I think that this map, especially in the breakthrough mode, could be fixed with some relatively simple changes. Now, one of the biggest complaints out there and one of my complaints about it is that the armor on the attacking team just steamrolls out of control. It gets way too crazy and all of a sudden the defenders are just getting hit with like i counted eight enemy tanks at one point rolling over us and it, it's no fun fighting tanks especially when you don't have tanks on your side uh however there were a lot of field cannons at the main base on this map and you can tow those field cannons into decent defensive positions and use them to take out armor. And when I did this, I had some decent success with it, but you have to do it early in the game. You have to set it up uh, very preemptively against the enemies and the driving physics of towing things is very awkward and difficult to get, get things into the proper setup. Sometimes you'll just die trying to get a field cannon set up. If DICE put in some more field cannons or six pounder guns or whatever in a appropriate positions without having to tow them into place. This could give the defenders a bit more tools to work with to try and defend themselves against overwhelming armor. So I think DICE needs to put something on the defensive side to try and counter the oncoming onslaught. There's also the problem of the one-sided air superiority. Now, airplanes can do a huge amount of damage when they're upgraded properly, have the right weapons, and it's no fun fighting against them, especially now that the Fliegerfoss got nerfed. Uh, defenders just don't feel like they're really fighting against the airplanes. They're more focused on ground targets and tanks pushing in on them, and fighting against the planes can be really difficult. Uh, playing in an airplane on the American side, the attacking team, it would just felt easy. Like, I didn't feel challenged at all. There's a few AA cannons here and there, but honestly, anti-aircraft cannons are stupidly easy to take out with an airplane now. If you have explosive rounds or whatever, you can kill them well before they can kill you. And so you're just having a field day. It's like shooting a fish in a barrel. Dice needs to do a better job of trying to balance out some of the air control on the map. This might change up a little bit after the next TTK update or maybe the one after that. Uh, I see less people playing with the assault class because the weapons just aren't as fun anymore. And maybe if there's more assault classes out there, that means there'd be more Fliegerfoss and there'd be more people working against aircraft. There's so many things that are tied into each other that it's hard to say what exactly will help balance this out. 
but it's like a double front thing. The attackers just get tanks and aircraft and it's not fun up until the very last point of the map in which the attackers, I believe, lose their tanks and lose their supply depots anyway. So if they still have tanks, they eventually run out of ammo and then they're just not as effective with them. And the defenders finally get a tank at that point too. So things finally start to even out, but uh, just the first several objectives of the map are just like, okay, so how long do you think will last against unending tanks? So there's definitely some things that DICE can do to fix this that don't require redesigning the entire map from the ground up, and I think will improve the experience significantly in the long run. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sure, like you guys, I cannot wait for the next TTK update. The hotfix hopefully drops next week, and we can start getting into some more refined gunplay for Battlefield 5. See you guys next time. This is Level Cap signing off.